I like clever and creative music. I also tend to like a lot of laid-back music. I tend to stay away from music that makes me feel anxious. I mean, this doesn't mean that I dislike high-energy music. There's a lot of high-energy music that I do like. You know, I just have a tendency to like the stuff that makes me feel more relaxed. And for me, it's all about the music first, the lyrics second. That's the way that I write music. That's the way that I listen to music. If a song has really, really crappy lyrics, but the music itself is very interesting and takes... Yeah, eh, eh, let's jerk my head around a bunch. If a song has really crappy lyrics, but the music is interesting and takes me on a journey of some sort, then I'll probably really love the song. Let's take 70s Yes, for example. They have lyrics like... Shining, flying, purple wolfhounds, show me where you are. Caesar's palace, morning glory, silly human race. Yeah, the lyrics are just terrible. They're just, they're just awful. But I still love the song. If a song has crappy music, like it's irritating to listen to, or it just generally sounds like it's geared for the lowest common denominator, but it has the best lyrics ever, I'll still probably hate the song. There's a lot of music that I don't outwardly dislike, but I find boring. And with all the refining that's going around everywhere, there's a lot to be bored over. And when there's a type of music that's supposed to make me feel energized, but all it does is bore me, it sometimes causes me to panic, which is what happens a lot to me when it comes to some types of EDM. You know, not the three-minute-long uh, pop vocals type of EDM, but, you know, the longer extended stuff, especially the stuff that doesn't have vocals on it, right? Sometimes it, uh, something where it could drone on for 10 minutes. And so it's something that makes me kind of shy away from going to dance clubs. And it's definitely something that uh, I found irritating at bathhouses. Of course, it's probably what they played to avoid having people go to the bathhouse just to have a place to sleep, right? For the night, because it's it would be cheap, right? Like 30 bucks. And if you're in a big city, it's hard to find a, uh, a hotel for 30 bucks, right? So, and you know, don't get me wrong. Sometimes the lyrics can ruin a song as well, particularly if it's paired with an awful attitude. The kind of lyrics and attitudes that make me the most uncomfortable are the kind where people are bragging about celebrating the worst sides of capitalism and violence, misogyny, and materialism. Having said that, I can tolerate those kind of attitudes more when they come from women. I guess I don't feel that there's some sort of competition, but there's also usually less homophobia and misogyny when it's coming from women. It's just usually, right? I don't like being put in a position where I feel like I need to be competitive. I hate that, honestly. I don't want to feel like I need to compete with anyone. Especially not when I'm listening to music. I have some sort of weird competitive feeling. Why would I want that when I'm listening to a song? Why would I want to compare myself to other people? Why would I want to listen to music that celebrates comparing ourselves to other people? You know, and keeping up with the Joneses. Why? Those are the worst parts of capitalism. Why would I want to put on a mindset that props those things up in order to be able to enjoy it? it it's terrible for our mental well-being. I'd even verge to say that, you know, if you have any sort of spirituality or spiritual sense at all, that it's terrible for us on a spiritual level. You know, so, so I generally stay away from it. It's why I don't really even listen to Lil Nas X, even though I appreciate what he's done for the scene. He's like a bull in a china shop when it comes to the misogyny and homophobia that's normally so common in the scene. The scene needed a shakeup, and Lil Nas X offered that in spades. A you know, and I'm glad that he's done it. I'm, I'm glad that that's happening. But it's still mostly the same materialistic, bragging, competitive message. You know, so I listen a couple times, I take note of what he's saying and doing, and I move on to other music. As I truly don't want to put on a materialistic, pugnacious, and hyper-capitalistic kind of mindset in order to be able to enjoy that kind of content. I have no interest in doing that kind of mental role-playing. 
And yes, this also applies to a lot of music under the metal umbrella as well. You know, especially the growling varieties, right? I'm supposed to put on a certain kind of mindset to enjoy it, and I just don't like going there, honestly. I I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to enjoy about putting myself in that kind of mindset, and why I would purposely want to be in that kind of mindset. It's like how you have to put on certain kinds of mindsets in order to enjoy certain types of humor. If you don't put on the mindset, you'll find no value in the humor. Honestly, there are some types of humor that I refuse to put on the right kind of mindset in order to be able to enjoy it. For instance, I don't think I'll ever enjoy Steven Crowder's humor. I refuse to look at people that way, and the same thing applies to certain kinds of music that requires that I'm supposed to look at people a certain way. I just like, no, I'm just not interested in that. I'm just not going to do it. And I suppose that makes me close-minded in that area, and I I'm all right with that. Anyway, besides it being too refined for its own good, to where it's hard to tell one artist from another except for their singing voices, one of the reasons I can't get into most new country is that they try so hard to be so family-focused. You know, Christian-focused. It's, it's trying too hard to sound wholesome. You know, or it's all about drinking, right? That's another one, right? With all the capitalistic fripperies associated with country. It's pseudo-traditional in a way that can't include me. And we saw how K.D. Lang was treated by the country community when she actually made original-sounding country, besides the homophobia. But there are gems out there like Chris Stapleton. He's like 1970s country. To me, that's the best era of country. That, that's just my opinion. You know, it's my opinion. I especially enjoy his waltzes. My favorite guitarists are the ones who can create a very memorable but very creative solo. I don't like it when guitarists want to impress us with how proficient they are at their guitar playing. I like it when they want to impress us with how creative they are, and with how clever they are. Even though I really love some of the projects he's been with, particularly when he's worked with Bill Bruford, um, Alan Holdsworth is an example of one of those guitarists who is just, it's all about how, oh, look how, look how proficient and, and great I am at playing the guitar. I mean, virtually nothing that Alan Holdsworth plays is, is memorable. He doesn't really try to create melodies. He doesn't really have any hooks. He creates textures, which there's nothing wrong with, but just, he wants to impress us with how he can work with any scale. You can make up an entirely new scale and he'll find a way to work within it. He'll, he'll find a way to, you know, but it's all, if you've ever heard his stuff, it's just all, there's never, it never stops. There's never a point where you can have a d defined melody, right? You know, it's just, it's just constantly moving and it's just like, well, that's, that's no good. There's, there's nothing, what, so... You know, it, it is impressive what he's able to do, but that's not why I listen to music. Steve Howe, on the other hand, is an example of a guitarist who wants to impress people with how creative he is, how clever he is, how original he is. And that's cool to me. But I also love a guitarist, just about any guitarist, who can create a very memorable guitar line. A lot can be said about creating something catchy. And yeah, I know this, this would mean that I love a lot of guitarists. Yeah, you're right, I do. I listen to a wide, wide variety of music, including music that's not in English, including music that has no lyrics at all. It would be very difficult for me to like just pinpoint what genre is my favorite. 70s jazz rock fusion bossa nova? Perhaps. Anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble. Have a great day.